This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-hosts, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hi there. And, oh god, the timing of this, so oh, jeebus. Yeah. Oh, I, I... You know, when we did our last episode on Return of Kings, I was not expecting to revisit any kind of MRA bullshit or anything even pertaining to it for a good long time. Mm -hmm. And then this fucking, this 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 fucking lazy, and, and I'm calling him lazy, and we'll and I'll get into that a little bit later. Lazy, misogynistic, self-absorbed, coward. Goes, Racist. Racist too. Racist too. Okay. Yeah, going the full nine with this one. Oh yeah, the, the, this and he decides. Well, women aren't throwing themselves at me, so I'm just gonna go and kill a bunch of fuckers. <laughs> and I deserve to have women throw themselves at me. Right. What? Just because your your father is what was it an assistant director for the Hunger Games or something? It's like no, no, really? no. That's not why. It's because he's a white man. That's why he deserves to have. I'm sorry. That's why he deserves to have white women throw themselves at him. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. All, all of the stuff we are describing the same person, Elliot Roger, who Spaz Fox actually had a good idea, and I've already you know went back on on uh, what his good idea is is not to refer to him by name, but just as some fucker. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I actually remember uh, back when the whole Virginia Tech massacre happened. Um, well, actually, it was the year that it happened, because in Rolling Stone, Bill Maher wrote a list of, like, it was, like, the top ten assholes of the year or something, or the top ten worst people of the year. And and for, for, for that, he just said, the asshole who shot up Virginia Tech. I've already forgotten his name, and I think you should, too. Don't give this fucker what he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, hey... Yeah, but, oh, well, I don't even remember the guy who shot up uh, Virginia Tech's name, so I guess it worked. Oh, good. Yeah, but th this guy, I, I think, as far as, like, within the first week, still, you know, his name, that's one thing. But after that first week, definitely work more towards, remember, oh, it's that misogynistic fucking coward. And, and yes, I will call him a coward. I will keep calling him a coward because instead of facing up facing it, owning up and facing the responsibility for what he did he just shot himself it's just yeah no. because if you if, if people don't want to have sex with you it's clearly their problem they're the ones who have the issues there's yeah. nothing wrong with you buddy i mean like you're you're a nice guy you're you're the the coolest cat around why why wouldn't people want to just throw their pussy at you mm. i know right i mm. mean it's it's just i don't get it i yeah, mean well, I, I do get it he's the perfect gentleman Oh, oh, yeah. Such a ass. nice guy. Seems like such a nice guy while you're spewing your bullshit manifesto on YouTube. Yeah, I could... About how I... you're going to cleanse the world or something, or you, the day of retribution is at hand. Yeah, the oh, yeah. day of retribution, yeah. Mm -hmm. You seem like such a winner there, buddy. Oh, yeah, very much so. It's too yeah. bad that, you know, he was then shot, and I don't know if they've come out and said if he shot himself or if he was shot by the police, but my sister you know, heard about it, and she was like, oh, well, he's going to get sex now because mm -hmm. he's going to get raped in prison. <laughs> oh, oh. And then and then we found out he had been shot, and we're like, oh, darn. Still well, you don't know. I mean, if you, if you believe in hell, you could believe that he's being raped by demons down there. <laughs> That's fine. Well, uh, yeah. Or if you believe certain, certain factions of certain religions, then he's being raped by furries. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, that's oh. part of a religion somewhere? Like, cause... No, there are some, there have been, over the years, some religions that, that, that would say, you know what, if you're furry, you're, you're an abomination, you're going to hell. It, it, it's oh. probably one of the more extreme, uh, what am I thinking? Um, 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 not controversial. Something like that. That We'll go with that. I thought but you it, were just referring to furries as a religion. No, <laughs> not the furries, no. Okay. No, Good. it's just religious folks against furries for whatever reason. But... But yeah, so <laughs> a lot of stuff on this guy, and, and and of course the the backlash and the front lash and the side slash, all of the lashing, you know, in every direction. I'm sorry, the side slash, really? Yeah, the side slash. <laughs> I think that's something entirely different. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. 
Yeah, just a little bit. That would have happened in prison. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like the uh, side shank. <laughs> but yeah, like a lot of other people have already expressed, I, I, I feel nothing for this fucking gunman that, that was killed. And and he's not the only person we're going to be talking about. It, 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 this opens up a whole huge can oh, yeah. of worms. Uh, and and, and I, I admit, I tried watching the one video of his that's been going around. Like I think it was like his last one before the shooting happened. Yeah, the one that he yeah. shot in his car the day before. Yeah. It, yeah. For for more reference, I know probably a lot of our listeners also watch it, Lacey Green, the one that was featured in her most recent video. That one, I could I couldn't stand like maybe maybe a minute or two of it. I was like, no, fuck it. Uh uh-uh, uh no. Cannot do it. I was just like, This is one I'm... creepy fucker. My God. Yeah. And all I could think of was like every time uh, he opened his mouth, all I could here, I mean, aside from, you know, the horrible things, was just, eh, meh, meh, mm-hmm. meh, 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 and I know that's kind of bringing it down, that's probably a little disrespectful given what all ultimately happened, but he sounded just so petulant, whiny, and, like, was, ma- I, I, I can't stand how big a deal our society places on men to lose their virginity. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrifying, and, like, the more I think about it, the more this is, like, retroactively ruined, like, a lot of, you know, I mean, I don't want to say, like, oh, poor me, it's ruined all the media that I've grown up with, but when you think about it, like, the movie, like, the American Pie movies, mm-hmm. those yeah. are, like, seriously, like, they're they're borderline reprehensible now. Yeah, I, I, I'll admit, I hadn't thought about it, but then again, I don't think of the American Pie series very often. So I didn't think of it much until you brought it up. Now I'm thinking it's like, you have a point there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the whole thrust of the of the first movie is these four high school kids who are like, oh, God, we're virgins, and we're going to go to college as virgins, and that's horrible. But we're going to get laid before that happens, and no longer will our, will our dicks remain flaccid and unused. And now watch Sean William Scott drink jizz. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and like, we're get I on. Just... Yeah. You know, and here's this guy who was 22 years old, and he's like, I'm still a virgin. It's like, yeah, and I know people who are way older than you who are still virgins, so what's the big deal? Yeah, I know somebody who is about my age who's still a virgin that I talk to regularly, and he is not going out and, like, blasting up the countryside or the city side. He's frustrated, obviously, but he's not going to go out and be like, you know? Or even kissed a girl. Um, you know, there are a lot of reasons for that. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, if you're just sitting there expecting women to throw themselves at you, it, you know, you, you got to make it move, too. You can't just sit there and be like, well, she's not making out with me right now. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. I have to say, though, there is one good thing that's come out of this. It's that it's reaffirmed uh, my hatred for the MRA movement. I, oh, yeah. I serious I seriously yeah. can't believe just how horrible some of these people are and the and some of the terminology that they come up with like before all this happened I had no idea that there was such a thing as incel which for those who are unaware incel is an abbreviation for involuntary celibacy Oh god Yeah and they have groups <laughs> And they you can join if you're an incel <laughs> <laughs> Like, why Suffering don't you guys incels do survive each other together. Then, you know, oh, it's like yeah, yeah. You, you know, clearly you also know another, you know, other involuntarily celibate people. Just yeah. hook up. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> why, Get together and do such something a hard about problem it. To solve? Yeah, but I, but I'm, ha- I'm willing to bet that the whole incel thing is mostly guys. I'm willing to bet. I'm not saying yeah. that women aren't part of it too. I'm, I'm sure there are some women that are, and if they are, they're not for very long. I'm sure, either because they lose their lose the right to be in the club, or they're just so disgusted by it that they have to leave. <laughs> Whichever one happens to happen, but yeah. just well, so... it's because women face an entirely different problem. I mean, yeah. it's the entirely opposite end of the spectrum. While men are encouraged to lose their virginity and you know go out and get laid as soon as possible. Women are dirty and sluts and terrible people if they have sex. You know what? If I have a daughter, I'm going to raise her like you would raise 
like like up until now people would raise guys in terms of sex you know like okay you want to go have sex go have sex just use protection you know encourage it like if she's yeah, 13 well, and she wants and she likes this boy and she really wants to have sex with him and i f and i find out or figure it out somehow i'll be like okay here have a pack of condoms go have a good time you know and and if he and if he does something horrible to you that you don't want and he doesn't stop and, and all of that good stuff, shit, well, I have a couple of swords that, that, you know, they've never been bloodied, but there's a first time for everything. Just saying. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, it, it is true that just the, the hypocrisy about how, for men, sex is like this, you know, this great conquest that everybody, you know, that every man, you know, has to pursue and, you know, stake their claims on. Yet women, if they if they try to do anything of the sort, are just immediately demonized as being, you know, like, yeah, slutty or whorish or overly promiscuous or, or mm -hmm. any, you know, other kind of pejorative description that would never get a man, you know, would never befit a man or, you know, be, be assigned to a man. I mean, it's, it's really, it's disgusting. And, of course, if, and if they don't have sex at all, then they're just overly prudish. Yeah, yeah, they're so, prudes, they're bitches, bitches, they're rude, they're stuck up. They're, they're cold. There's no they're, winning. Yeah, it's and, it's disgusting. It is, uh, and and I admit, you know, I'm 31, so I grew up a lot more in, in yeah, 31, and I was raised at least during my teenage years in the South, where where you're going to have a lot of that kind of a mindset. I mean, granted, it's all over the country, but I've seen it more in the South than anywhere else. And I, I'm ashamed to admit that at one point I had similar attitudes. In fact, I was dating a girl who, by the time she and I got together, she had had like I think close to thirty guys. Which Whoa. I look I look back at it now, and I'm thinking, okay, she's goddamn impressive. But yeah. at the time, I would like poke her and tease her, and 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 you know just basically talk down about it or whatever, or or whatever. Just and and it's really shameful of me to do that. And I've I've obviously learned my lesson. <laughs> mm -hmm. at least <laughs> you know yeah I, I, I make the effort to keep that lesson learned so if you're a woman you come up to me oh, I've banged about 50 guys sweet good on you were they all yeah, that good I, I would yeah. expect a high five from you really like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like what's uh, your secret <laughs> yeah, no, <right? laughs> I mean and this is also discounting porn stars which they get paid to bang on screen so well, porn stars and uh, prostitutes, which, by the way, if sex was such a big deal for him that, that he wanted wanted to do the thing, and, and and going back, of course, you know, he also wants to have the women thrown at him, you know, throw themselves at him. You, you, you were in California. Nevada is one state away. It's maybe, I don't know, maybe a good three or four hour drive to Vegas if, if you're in Southern California. I, I think that's where this was. I could be wrong. I think so because uh, wasn't this at uh, one of the USC campuses? Ah, okay. I want to say Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, well, it says uh, the shooting took place in Isla Vista or Isla Vista. Yeah. Which I don't, yeah. I don't know where that is. <laughs> yeah, but um, but either way, you you California is one state away from Nevada. Nevada yeah, and... has legal prostitution, and e even if you don't want to do just pay for the sex, guess what? I'm pretty sure you have enough money. You could pay a woman to act out the 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 your whole fantasy right there. Have her throw herself at you and yeah, and the guy drove all a BMW. You. So anybody who's like, well, prostitution were legal. Trust me, the the kid had enough money to get himself to Vegas and get a prostitute if he wanted one. Yeah, you know. But again, do I it, think it, it, prostitution should be illegal? No, not really. Um, do I think it would have helped in this situation? Clearly, no. Yeah, which which no. is unfortunate because this again, this guy he he had the mindset of a lot of these MRAs we've talked about, we've made fun of on this show and everywhere that. Yes, we are the ones that the women should be throwing themselves against. You know, we are the ones that that women should be fawning all over and coming up and asking and asking us, "Can we suck your dick?" You know, but well, it, but of it course, it just kind of comes back to. I'm sorry, but but of course, it, it's not happening to him. So his response: shoot all the fuckers. I, I just, it, it really does come back to just that whole idea of. You know, male entitlement. Like, uh, you know, the, the the mindset that some of these people 
have, which seems to be, I'm a white man, so therefore I deserve all the privilege that society says I should have, and when I don't get it, I'm going to do something stupid. Because, meh, I don't, I don't like the fact that I didn't get laid. And it's like, yeah, I mean, Nevada's one state away, and prostitution is legal over there, so if that's all you're really after, it, you can find it. And hell, if you didn't even want to pay for it, there's Craigslist if you're feeling daring. Yeah. Yeah, and, there, I mean, there are so many different ways that you can hook up. I don't understand how it was, you know, apparently just his entire life goal, and he couldn't manage it. That's just, really, dude? I mean, fuck. You well, I mean, at me. aside from the fact that he was a creepy fuck. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like this guy can't get laid. You know, you know, you know. I've seen enough pictures of him. It's like, okay, you know what? If if if, if I was swinging that way, okay, might be a little attractive. Sure. All right. You know, he's rich. Obviously, got a BMW. It's like, okay, you know what? Why not? The personality turns me off a little bit. Obviously. But, yeah, but there are plenty of people who want to hook up, you know, after a night at the bar or whatever. And not that I'm saying that that's a great idea, because, yeah. you know, those are decisions that you should make sober. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, again, that's another place that he had an opportunity that he, you know, because a woman, because he had to work for it, he didn't care. Yeah, oh my god, I have to work for pussy. <laughs> like, dude, I don't come know, on. I just... It, the, th the thing is, like, it is not that hard to get laid. And I, and I actually say this for, coming from the perspective of somebody who, like, hasn't had sex in a couple of years, but had several yeah. opportunities to, because I've been out to the bars, and I've been, you know, there when there are, you know, a lot of young, attractive people there, and, you you know, things sort of start, and, you know, you see, like, the, you know, see, like, a girl start to, you know, start starting to come on to me, but that's not really what I want, that's not what I want. I, I, I want to meet somebody, meet them on like a more, you know, intimate or just, you know, intellectual level some kind. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I would like it to go in that direction if it could, but I'm not going to try and force that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to just have a random encounter at the bar. I mean, you know, putting the risk of disease aside, it's just, it's, that's not what I'm after. Right. Yeah, well, it sounds like you're like me and just don't really find the idea of it appealing. There's, you know, because it is so much a better experience if there's more of a personal connection. So it's like, you know, if I just wanted to get off, I can do that myself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't I don't need somebody else for that. Exactly. And you know, for all for all of my my horniness, all of my over sexuality and everything, I would probably, you know, if, if I'm honest with myself, if I'm in that bar situation, I would probably fall into the same thing. You know, I would, you know, if, if I you go home with anybody from a bar, odds are I met her like within the first five minutes and we talked for like three hours at the very least. Know her name, know some of her basic interests, you know, be able to have a good conversation. And then if sex happens, then sex happens. But to go in and then towards the end of the night, somebody's coming on to me half drunk, not drunk enough to where they can't consent, but you know, but at least enough to lower we'll their just inhibitions call this enough. Tipsy. <laughs> tipsy. Yeah. yeah. You know, somebody comes up to me, she's tipsy and uh and, and wants to take me home. I'm I may is depending on how my how I'm feeling at that point, but by that point I'm probably thinking, you know what? I'm I'm usually there with friends and they need to get home and so I literally can't. And even if I could I probably wouldn't, because it'd be like, yeah, you've had alcohol in you, and I don't know if that's just you being tipsy that that's making you come on to me, or if you're if or if the attraction is genuine, because it could be both ways. Yeah, and that's not to say that I would never, you know, do something like that. I would never have, you know, a, a one night stand with somebody after you know an encounter at the bar, you know, or maybe you know, um, maybe more nights if it you know led to something, because I was able to connect with them. I mean, that's not out of the question. It's just there have been opportunities like that that have presented themselves at the bar, and I've, like, rarely have ever taken them, mostly because I've just felt kind of uncomfortable with the whole situation. And there was one situation in particular where I was at I was at a bar, and there was this girl who I, you know, was talking to, and we were going back and forth, and we actually ended up making out on the porch at one point. Oh, nice. But, um... <laughs> yeah, and that, but that... 
but then what what happened was at one at one point she kind of walked up to me and she's like, you know, there's this guy who's hitting on me. Could you pretend to be my boyfriend so that he'll leave me alone? And I was that was the moment where I was just like, okay, we're 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 done here. I'm sorry, but no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Which leads into I, another. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just I don't know. I didn't really know what I was gonna say. I was just I just. <laughs> It's just if, if that's the if that's the kind of like game you want to play like because like well, what's gonna happen if we actually do get a little further down the line? I mean, like, what are you gonna start pulling with me? What I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't really what I was thinking. I just became resoundly unco with with the whole situation. I was just like, okay, back enough now. Yeah, and that is kind of, that is a a bad thing to to take it back into the bigger discussion here. That is a bad thing when guys won't back off of a woman when she says no she has to have some other reason and even some mm. of those reasons won't work like like i've seen stories in fact if you look on when women refuse.tumblr.com they've been chronicling and, and archiving a lot of these stories up there and i just followed it uh i think earlier today and i'm already seeing like a good number popping up and it's like holy shit you know, they they have some of the worst ones, obviously. You know, the women who are mm. assaulted for saying no, killed, all that all that really horrible stuff. But even not going that far, you'd have a guy like like say a woman walks into a bar, she's just enjoying herself. She doesn't she's not really interested in hooking up. She's just enjoying the atmosphere. Maybe if she strikes up a friendly conversation, that's fine. And then some guy keeps trying to pester her and pester her and pester her, and she says no. He doesn't listen she tries to say she's a lesbian and he of course doesn't listen because he's obviously one of those jackasses that think oh you just haven't had the right dick in your vagina yet oh then, i've i've been in that experience before i actually oh, kissed yeah. a friend to you know get this guy to go away yeah <laughs> so so you know what i'm talking about yeah i mean and, I'm, well, okay. I, I actually so I'm, I'm go... going to go ahead and bring up this whole hashtag business that's been going around. Yes, please um, do it. Yeah, yes, all women. So, uh, you know, I can't even say that I support that hashtag. And, you know, there's also not all men. But it's like, and no, it, it's not all women. Not all women have had that experience. And I don't think that you need to hyperbolize the situation for it to be important. And right. I, it, you know, to a great extent, I find that actually offensive because it doesn't matter how many people this happens to. It happens to people, and that is the problem. Right. Right. Um, yeah. It's, uh, the, you know, rape is not something that men, that only men do to only women. It goes all different directions, and it's just something that needs to be stopped, period. Yeah. Yeah. It's just because because rape to to put it on in a very very, on the, I, I want to say the lightest sense possible. Rape is not cool. Understatement. That's the word I'm looking for. That is an mm -hmm. understatement. <laughs> yeah, rape is a fucking abomination, and if you do it, you are an abominable person. Yes, uh, especially especially if you are if you have no remorse for it, especially because there could be some out there that they have the remorse. They're still horrible, but. Mm. But they don't, and they don't deserve any flack for what they've done. But at least you yeah. know that these people, okay, they have the remorse. That they're showing the remorse. You can tell they're remorseful, and you can tell it's sincere remorse, not just crocodile tears. Those are the people yeah. that could be reformed. It's the ones that are not reformed that you need to lock away and, and just toss away from everybody else. Yeah, like the people who, who you know were involved in the Steubenville incident, because. Mm -hmm. Like oh the video God. that was yeah. what was released online of the, you know them going like oh yeah we raped that bitch like the, the Zed raped Marcellus Wallace in Pulp Fiction I was like oh, okay first of all aside from the fact that you're a horrible fucking human being that's not showing any remorse you do realize what happened to Zed right he got his dick blown off yeah why don't these kids have their dicks blown off oh wait and then because Marcellus they're fucking football down players a couple of hard pipe hitting associates to go to work on him with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch yeah so zed did not have a happy ending so shut your goddamn mouth exactly uh, oh goddamn and and you know what when all of this started popping up there was a i think it was a yeah the southern poverty law center and it, it was a link for that site actually started going around um this from 2012 
but they list a lot of the sites that are in this whole manosphere, quote unquote. Uh, and I looked at it, and I'm surprised I did not see Return of Kings on here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but who knows? Maybe maybe compare in comparison to some of these others, they're not as horrible. Which is really weird for me to say, considering the stuff we've had and we've talked about about that site. And as I hadn't checked it in the past couple of days, but like the day I heard the news, I immediately went to go check Return of Kings, and so far there was nothing. I haven't checked it since, so I don't know. I don't know. I, and yes, that is kind of a very, very odd curiosity of me. But some of the sites that they do list is uh, Alcuin, A L C U I N, Alcuin. Alquin, uh, boycott American women because, you know, meh. Oh, oh, and the mission statement for boycott American women. Generally immature, selfish, extremely arrogant, self-centered, mentally unstable, irresponsible, and highly unchaste. Really? <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I actually just say I never knew what Return of Kings was until just now, yeah. literally. <laughs> so... Yeah. Thank you, Gomer. Yeah. Thank, th th thank you, and allow me to foreshadow your imminent demise in the future, because now I can never unsee this. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I, need, I need somebody to pay for that, because the more, the more I dig into this, and the more I find out about this fucking MRA bullshit, where people are just like, why aren't these women doing these things for us? Because we're the ones with all the privilege, and they're trying to take that privilege away from us i mean you can really get down to it that's pretty much what the whole what, it's what it's all about is yeah. them getting mad that their privilege is being not 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 even taken from them that it's being also given to other people yeah what was it the uh oh there was one the the feminazi stole my ice cream cartoon that's been going around every now and then that that is a perfect example of this you know the perfect perfect way of showing this. Feminazi stole my ice cream! Feminazi! Oh, yeah. It's a great cartoon. You should go watch it. <laughs> and it, it's, it, it's just boom, you know? Ah. Yeah. And of course, one of the sites they also list on the, uh, the list here is the Men Rights subreddit, which at one point, they actually banned users from posting uh, Twitter links. I, th I think it's just oh, yeah. Twitter links or Twitter accounts or whatever. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Which, I don't know. Which, speaking of Twitter links and Twitter hashtags, you, you brought up momentarily the not all men thing. And I do want to say something about that right now. To anybody who, who is about ready to jump in with not all men, I've even seen it happen on my Facebook a couple of times. It, okay, it's like this. No, not all men do this. And unless somebody says all men do this or all X does Y or what have you, then the general assumption should be, of course, not all X does Y. Thus, unless somebody says all men are rapists or all men are, are bastards towards women, then no, not all men are bastards or rapists or anything else horrible towards women. That should be the assumption. You don't need to jump in, not all men, because it makes it fucking redundant, and people are getting sick of your bullshit, and we want to toss you into a lake full of alligators. Yeah, I I honestly, like, if, if I'm, you know, full disclosure, I really didn't get why the whole not all men thing was as highly contentious as it was. I mean, I, I kind of got it, but I always kind of figured it's like, well, it is a valid point that not, you know, it's, it's, it's not fair to demonize all men for the actions of, I mean, I, I won't, I don't even, I can't even say a relatively small minority because it's, it's much larger, much, much larger than it needs to be, whatever the percentage. But after this whole incident occurred and I, and all of this, you know, it, it came to light that he was, you know, an MRA and that, you know, he was just frustrated because women weren't flinging themselves onto his dick that I was just like, you know what? I get it. I, I get why just, interjecting with but not all men is a really damaging distracting and pretty shitty thing to do yeah especially since it should be obvious that duh not all if you're if you're one of the ones saying not all and and you 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 fit into the mold of you um you're the one of the ones that didn't then there is no reason for you to do that 
It's just no yeah. shit. No fucking shit. Uh. I don't know. But I found the Tumblr the Tumblr uh, blog that I found, uh, When Women Refuse. I found that through a Jezebel article. And they, they actually put up a couple of uh, – actually, I think uh, two or three different uh, uh, articles – that, that, that I have screenshots of. First one being refusal to give lovers sex led to women's death. Because, again, entitled asshole here decides, oh, she's not giving me pussy. Stab, 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 stab. No. It's just, what the hell? Oh. And, and of course, this guy tried to, to do what this other asshole did and just jump right in front of a car to try to take himself out. But nope. Uh, but... According to this article, he was be- he was set upon and beaten by an angry mob. Really? Yes. So, well, yay. <laughs> yay for street retribution. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I mean, yeah, and, I don't and, know. I, I I I I I can't say I'm in full support of, you know, people taking the law into their own hands, but when you witness somebody attempt to do something like that, then I I don't really I'm 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 more than content to turn my head and you know whatever happens to you happens. Yeah, that that's... if not take a direct part, direct role in kicking the shit out of you. Oh yeah, I I would you know again two swords never been bloodied first time for everything. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and and they also this particular one uh, article actually. Uh, posted up the uh, 16-year-old Connecticut girl who was stabbed because she refused a guy's invitation to prom. And here's the thing. I think that particular girl, I think she had a boyfriend she was going with too. And uh, obviously having a boyfriend didn't stop the fucker from stabbing her. So it's... it's, So it is... And we go back to it again, the fact that, that women saying no is not enough. In fact... Just within the past couple of months, my best friend called me while she was at a bar. This guy was, like, really hitting on her really creepily and not taking no for an answer, not taking any hints for an answer. And so she called me, and she said, look, you know, I'm, I'm going to pretend I'm on the phone with my boyfriend. You need to play with him, you know, play off of me like that. And obviously the guy wasn't going to hear my conversation, but, you know, she needed somebody to work with. And so I did, and thankfully the guy backed off and left her alone. And it's just that that's that is how horrible it seems to be. It's like what's wrong with what no says no? You know Well and just coming back going back to the whole, you know, like, oh, but I have a boyfriend thing, it's like I I, I saw some I think it was on Tumblr where somebody posted, yes, because like men will respect the claims over you of a man they don't even know. Then your like own auto- you know, bodily autonomy or your your yeah. own yeah. personal choices. They respect that man who, for all they know, doesn't even exist. Yeah, it's just what the for fuck. Uh, so I yeah, know. I mean, it just again, it it, it comes back to the, to the whole male entitlement thing, where men are you know aren't aren't told what you know what what is right and what is wrong and that's clearly the the way because people always talk you know they're all you know people are always educated about not about rape so much about what causes rape but what you can do to prevent rape and you know and how how women can prevent rape how they can prevent being raped not how you know horrible a thing rape is and how it's a violation of somebody's personal space and of their you know like their their own soul even but you know, just like oh, don't wear short skirts. Don't go out at night. Carry pepper spray. Yeah, I mean, put your there's... keys in between your fingers so you can stab them in the eye. Maybe I don't know. I mean, like instead of telling kids like, hey, rape's fucking horrible, and if you do it, you're fucking horrible. Exactly, and I'm going to tell that to any of my. In fact, as these kids get older and as they and they start learning about that kind of shit, I will. I if I'm around, I will waste no time in saying, hey, if she says no, you you. Back the fuck off! I'm, I'm already starting yeah. to get onto him about it because they're while they're not doing anything you know rapey or, or or sexually about it. There have been times where I have seen some of these kids just go up and do something to another kid. They keep saying no, but the one kid doesn't listen, and I I, I damn near you know just like go off. I, I 
pull them off and, and just say – sit them down and say, look, you, the person says no, you stop it immediately. You know, It doesn't matter anything else. It doesn't matter if she has your toy. It doesn't matter if he has – yeah, it has, it has that sticker you were wanting to put on your dresser. It, yeah, the no means fucking no. That means you back the fuck off. And then once that is dealt with, we deal with the rest of the issue. But, mm-hmm. but you know, once you know, no means fucking no. And and yeah. that's something I'm, I'm I, 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 while I am around here around these kids, I'm going to do my best to instill that in them. <sighs> but all about, about all you really can do is just you know start with the source. I mean, don't neglect raising your kids into respectful you know decent members of society that understand what is you know maybe i mean if even if you have different perspectives on what is right what is wrong what is accurate what is inaccurate whatever you need to under you know the one thing that everybody needs to understand is that rape is a horrible horrible thing done by horrible people and don't be one of those people yeah yeah Understand when no means no, which is fucking always. Yeah. Yes. That's and that's something that it just kind of shocks me that that people don't seem to get. You know, it's like I don't like the idea that people, you know, assume that you're just being coy when you say no. That it's part of a game. You know, I don't I don't even yeah. give a shit if, if they think that they're testing you. It doesn't matter if they say no. You bet. And you're like, off. oh, that you know, they're just being cute. Yeah. They just want me to go after them. You know what? No, because if they really want it, they'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, women don't have to play games. In fact, hell, I've been laid several times because women were outright blunt and said, hey, you know what? We're going to fuck. And I was like, OK. So we're going to fuck, yeah. we're going to do this thing. You know? Yeah, I mean... What this works, guys. Yeah, and I... It, oh, I don't know, I just remember when I... When I, my old job that I was working at, I... There was this girl I was working with who I really liked, and, you know, we got along, and I figured yeah, I might have a chance at, you know, if if nothing else, maybe, you know, just have a little fun, leave you know, leave it at that, and we could, you know go our separate ways or maybe we could become, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever. And yeah. so one day after work, I just sort of went up to her and asked like, Hey, are you, are you doing anything? You want to maybe, you know, go out for lunch or something, or maybe just get some coffee. And she's like, you know what? I'm really like not dating right now. I'm kind of in a bad place. And, and, the, and then I just, I just threw my hands on. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah. That's you're, you're good. <laughs> and I left it at that. Yes. That happens. Oh my it God. It happens. Even if they're not being genuine about, it's like, oh, I'm not, like, really dating right now. I actually kind of just, you know, I'd rather not go out with you. That doesn't fucking matter. Right. It, it just, it, the only thing that matters is they said, I'd rather not, and that that's it. Yeah. And if, and, if, and if they want to confide more in you as a friend or whatever, that's their call. You don't have to listen. I mean, I mean. You know, you you backed off. You didn't ask for any other info. Me being curious, I would be I would be curious, but I wouldn't push it. I wouldn't be like, okay, you know, yeah, okay. And I would be yeah. I mean, oh, I, but that's I wasn't curious, what I mean. but I wasn't. But in the same place, I mean, it figured I figured it was something very personal. It's like if that's if that's something that's going on in your life that you don't feel comfortable talking about, and has you know is affecting your, you know, your any potential relationships that come along. Then that's that's fine. You know, you you are well within your rights to say no. I'd rather not be involved with anybody right now. I've got some shit going on in my life. I want to work it out, and I just you know I, I I'd rather not. Yeah, yeah doesn't well, matter. You're not entitled to sex, and that's exactly. the big problem with men's rights activists is that they feel like they're entitled to things that they're really not. You know, all you really deserve from another person is you know, being a decent human being, that they shouldn't be hurting you or something like that. Saying no to sex is not hurting you. Does it no. suck? Sure. <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't mean that they owe you that. Right. Yeah. And I myself, I mean, it, 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 the only real truly committed relationship I've ever been in was when I was in college. And <clears throat> it was with this uh, this gal who we, <clears throat> we kind of hit it off if 
not 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 immediately. I mean, she was kind of on the pursuing end. She, you know, tried to get me to to crack and go out with her, and you know, we ultimately did. We started dating, and we started having sex on a fairly regular basis. But the thing is, she was also a very just intense and controlling person who, even though we had a lot in common, kept belittling me at these points and kept, you know, sort of making fun of of my relationship with my mother because she did not have a very good relationship with her mother and she seemed to resent me for that and she broke up with me about maybe seven or eight times in the course of five months if not less and it it reached a point where i was just like i can't fucking handle this anymore no no um, no no frequent frequent amount of sex is worth this shit yeah the, uh... and i and because that's and that and that there's one thing that being in that relationship taught me, it's that sex should be the least important part of it. Yeah. I mean, it's fun, but, you know, if you don't have it, you don't have it. And, you know, whatever, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, and the thing is, it gets old after a while, if that's all you're doing. I mean, because we did, like I said, we did have common, you know, interests. Like, we like watching movies, we like talking about politics, and, you know, she was a very fiery person. We were both journalism majors, and she, you know... There, there was a reason, you know, for why I, I got into her. But then all of this happened, and it just, it, it got to be too much. It got to be abusive, and I won't tolerate abuse in a relationship. Good on you. Nobody should tolerate abuse in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So, so to kind of drive this into another aspect of everything that's been kind of blowing up on the internet, uh, people, of course, they question, they wonder, okay, why did this happen? Why? Why did this guy feel so entitled? What what was the cause of male entitlement, especially in this case? And I found a quote on Tumblr that at least attempts to to answer these. And and I'm just going to read it and, and we'll, we'll discuss and all of that good stuff. So here we go. Porn teaches men they are gods. Pop culture teaches men that the epitome of success is to be surrounded by naked women fawning over you. Prostitution exists because we, as a culture, very much believe that women exist to pleasure men. We tell women that they have to work in marriage to keep their men happy, to keep them from straying, buy sexy lingerie, try threesomes, try anal, perform every porn fantasy he has. He needs it. He deserves it. It is your job. We can continue to skirt around these truths that the sex industry and our patriarchal, patriarchal culture breed men like Roger, but expect more violence. Yeah, expect more violence, more deaths, more rape, and more abuse. Our world is rife with Elliot Rogers. We create them every day. They aren't going anywhere. And this was from Feminist Current on misogyny and the sex industry in Elliot and Elliot Roger. First of all, I, I take issue with the porn thing. Because last time I checked, all porn is there to do is to entertain. And yeah, a lot of it is male fantasy. Sure, I'm not going to argue that. But it depends on what flavor of fantasy. And the women that take part in making the porn, I would say especially in 2014, I would say close to 100% of the women that are doing it are you know, doing it of their own volition. They're doing it of free will. If they're not... If they're not doing it of their own volition, then there are some other issues. I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, you know, the purpose of porn is to indulge a fantasy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that constant indulgement um, in a lot of ways teaches people that, you know, this is what you should look for and this is what you want and this is what you should do. Because people don't purely look at porn um, as a fantasy you know there are a great number of people who look to porn for advice you know how should i do this what should i expect yeah and yeah and the world of porn is much different than it was you know when when we were younger when you know hell before you know any of us were born i mean i mean to, 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 to get a little personal right um when i was about i think nine or ten, I can't remember how old, one of my friends managed to procure a porn magazine, and it was like this gigantic 
just awakening, you know, I mean, because I had heard of pornography and I, you know, I kind of, I knew what it was, but to actually see something like that it, real was like mind blowing and right. it, it was mystifying and it really was just like, wow, so this, this, this this is, uh, this is it, huh? And now, nowadays, if you have a computer, it, hell, if you have an iPhone, if, 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 if you have a, Bla- a Blackberry or if you have anything that can connect to the internet in some way, you're going to find porn. Oh, yeah. You don't even have to, like, go seeking it out. You can just stumble on it accidentally. Mm-hmm. So it's – and 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 a lot of the, the porn out there is really – I mean, I mean there, there's a lot of it that's, you know, mostly, like, amateur stuff that, you know, people just do sort of for their own amusement or for the amusement of others. Right. But then there's, you know, a lot of the higher, you know, higher quality, you know, more well-produced stuff that honestly is kind of violent. Yeah. And, not like in the sort of you know you know smacking them across the face and being like you you know dirty fucking whatever, it's just the the aggressiveness with which they do it is really unsettling, and I I I don't get it. I don't yeah. get why people find that attractive. Yeah, there are, and and you know what I I will defend you know defend porn and and you know like you like you were saying the the really the really aggressive stuff uh you know there there is a point for me but porn for me is just like any other genre you know just another genre which has its own subgenres of different things some of it you get into some of it you don't you know there are different things but you you know on the on the thing that they teach that this is the thing that people turn to it for advice i would say that's not the issue with porn it's the issue with the people realize not not you know not realizing and understanding porn is not reality even if it's like the amateur porn or whatever that you can find unless it's like actual homemade porn that two people just did in their bedroom with like a camera and one angle or whatever odds are it, it, there is some sort of a setup there are different things you have to do i mean come on just look at the staging angles in porn you you, you realize wait a minute that does the, you know, your bodies aren't like that when you're naturally doing things that way you know it's unnatural poses and yeah it's a lot of hard work so that right there alone should tip you off okay this main you know this is fun to look at and, and it's great it helps me get off if i want to get off but it's not the real thing it, it's not you know it's real well, enough and cost- that it's, uh, and it's real enough in the case that it happens to people, obviously, but it's it's not something you can necessarily <laughs> apply to the real world. Well, and just the constant should. overstimulation, the the constant access that everybody anybody can have to this, mm-hmm. and the fact that you know for a lot of people that's all they do is they sit in their you know sit in their rooms and they're just content to pleasure themselves to you know a heightened version of reality, and. That that can be pretty damaging once once you actually start expecting it to start happening in the real world, and you realize that real sex is not really like porn at all. No, it, um, it's... unless unless you you know started and continue to just watch nothing but you know home movies right. of of porn, where people just set up a camera in their bedroom and then just do what they normally do. Yeah, and and again to, to kind of reiterate, it's not a problem with the porn itself; it's the problem with the viewer. It's more the problem with the viewer than it is with the porn, because you know if you go in with that expect come if you come out of it with that expectation, then you're the one with the issues. You're the one that needs to be told, hey, look, real world actually works like this. It's not this. Real sex when you with your first time, it could be it, it, it it's nice. It could be awkward as hell though, because you know you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Well, no pun and intended. that brings up an, an important point because you know. That's a big problem with the way we deal with sex, which, you know, uh, primarily in America, we say, just don't do it. Right. You know, and so, yeah, people turn to porn as, you know, instructional or educational, and they really shouldn't. You know, this should be something that we can talk about and discuss without it being, you know, this horrible, you know, moral issue, you know. Yeah. People are going to have sex as much as you may not want it to happen. So why don't we give people the knowledge that they need and, you know, stop, yeah. you know, giggling about this behind closed doors. Yeah. And because we're not doing anyone any favors. Exactly. I mean, it's just no, no. Ugh, goddamn. 
So well, it's just the fact that they've made it just this 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 mystifying thing that you know this this magical sort of thing that you know it'll happen to everybody, but you know you know you just you gotta it'll it'll come your way or it'll be super easy or it'll be exactly like you expect it to be if you know if you keep watching all the porn that you do and it's not like i said it's not it's it's very very different from from that i mean there's i don't even really know what to say anymore in in all sorts of ways too because you know yeah a, a lot of porn you know has some sort of story attached to it but it's always like oh this unexpected thing happened and there was lots and lots of sex but yeah mm-hmm. You know, yeah, sure. Can that happen? Yeah. But chances are, you already know going into it that it's going to happen. And realistically, you should, because it should be something that you're prepared for. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, that means almost anything can happen. Because porn is scripted. It's, you know, or the... Yeah. I'd like to say the the majority of porn is scripted. But the the majority of... Um, yeah, the stuff leading into the actual sex is more scripted. Than... Yeah, I mean, because there's plenty of, of, of amateur porn. But guys, let me tell you, uh, even a lot of amateur porn, or I should say amateur, the quotation marks, porn, isn't really amateur. Yeah. You know, it's just being acted that way to, to give you that idea of, oh, you know, that extra titillation that I'm seeing something that, you know, ooh, this is their first time. You know, because everybody... As silly as it seems a lot of the time, everybody gets that little thrill out of, you know, this is something new. and Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, um, I've subscribed to porn sites that have actually touted the amateur stuff. I think I think in recent days, at least the ones that I've t- turned to aren't I, – I don't think they've touted everything as amateur. I mean uh, one of the big ones is the bang bus. Which, which, if you've not heard of it, it's basically guys pick up a girl, or sometimes a girl picks up a guy, and they fuck and they leave them on the roadside. Obviously, all scripted. But yeah, you know. and mm-hmm. and that's the, that's the thing. It's it's scripted. So if you're using that as your basis of uh, comparison or or your you know point of knowledge, it, it's probably not going to happen that way. You know, it yeah. can be awkward. It can be funny. It can be. You know, incredibly romantic. There's all sorts of things that it can be, and what you see in porn is probably not going to be one of them. Yeah, it's you're not going to see two people in porn having sex and talking about their day with each other. Yes, that has happened to me. <laughs> but you don't. You're not going to see that in your regular scripted porn, and that's and that's another thing people need to take away from it. No, porn itself, it, it, it's just like any other entertainment venue out there it's that's all it is do not take it to be reality it, it's like you don't get your you, you, you don't you, you don't use webmd to diagnose yourself you don't use fucking er to figure out how to set a bone properly or whatever and you don't use porn to figure out how the hell to have sex you know i mean mm. i mean maybe i think i think the only reason you would use porn anything that way is if you don't know what they already well if you don't know what the opposite bits look like already, for whatever reason, then okay, that's what they look like. This is what it's supposed to look like, or or what have you. Maybe the very basics, but that's about it. And I do mean very basics. Yeah. Oh, and we spent yeah. so much time on the porn. <laughs> but <laughs> well, but I mean, on the... it is. It is a relevant topic because, I mean, when you consider what happened with this guy and the entitlement that he obviously was feeling, I mean, it, it does kind of tie into just the, you know, the heightened sense of reality that porn can give off and the the message it can give that's like, oh, well, I mean, it's super easy to get laid and if you're not getting laid, then obviously it's not your fault. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'm... I guess I'm a little more lucky in that sense because, you know, in the terms of realizing that porn is not, you know, is is not a good source for learning about sex and everything, you know, as a whole, because I lost my virginity at 14. I, it was relatively early. So, you know, I had that time. OK, mm. so this is not like the porn I was watching. OK, it's actually much better, but, you know, it, it, it still works, you know. Yeah. Oh. 
Which leads into the other thing that, that this particular uh, quote brought up, and that's prostitution. It exists because we as a culture very much believe that women exist to pleasure men. You know, I think I was talking with this with Becky the other night, and at least I think it was Becky I was talking to, who, who had brought up the idea, you know, back when we were like cavemen and cave people and everything, you know that there was probably some, you know, two cavemen – you know, bartering over something and say, and one was like, okay, yeah, uh, I'll give you this, but what are you going to give me in return? The other guy was, well, I don't have anything. And so, well, what if I just maybe suck your dick or something? Okay, there you go. Put the <laughs> prostitution right there. And then they fucked. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. So that in and of itself doesn't necessarily mean that we believe women exist to pleasure men. There are women out there that, okay, you know what? I like to have sex. Why not get paid for it? You know, that, you know, Nevada economy right there. <laughs> okay, not all yeah. of it. But, yeah. but you know, it, it's it's not just, oh, women are around to pleasure men. No, prostitution, it, it's a way for not just women, but men too, to earn money. Or it should be a way they can earn money. It's... And, 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 and I can't even say it's relatively easy to do because sex is not always easy. You know, I mean, especially if you're in a position like if you're working porn or if you're a prostitute or whatever, maybe you have to be able to get off four or five times a day. Harder to do if you're a guy and and, and, and all that, but, you know, it gets tiring. Yeah. So it's not exactly just lay there and take it. You have to put some effort into it, especially if you're a prostitute and you're there – to make sure your your client gets the best bang for their buck. No pun intended. Ha. <laughs> ha. Ha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh, my God. So, yeah. So, prostitution being there because of the belief women exist to pleasure men? No. I mean, it's just, no, 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 no. Uh, that, that, that's just, no. Uh, they have telling women they have to work in marriage to keep their men happy, to keep from starving, and straying rather, not starving. Although they probably would, although probably they would use starving too if they were. Um, while yes, uh, not not uh, you know there are obviously people who believe that. There's also um, I don't see what media unless you go back to like maybe the 50s or whatever, or maybe even up to the 70s, but. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't see that as often. Obviously, it's still out there. Some people, I mean, what was it? What was it? Pat Robertson, who within the past year said something similar, like like you need to keep working at your marriage, otherwise he's going to leave you. That sort of thing. You know, <laughs> yeah, there is stuff that happens, but I think there's enough counterculture against it to show that no, that's not going to be the thing. The marriage is a partnership, and it takes two to do t the whole marriage tango. Yeah. So mm -hmm. and that that goes for any relationship, not just marriages. You know, uh, and and the, and the thing that says we create them every day, that's probably the only thing I can get behind, because you know there are people who do look at porn and take that as take that more seriously than they should. There are people who think that women exist just to pleasure men. You know. And and they, those people are having kids, and they're passing that on to their kids. And and now, especially since this this Elliot Rogers fucker happened, you know, people are saying no, this needs to change. And we're we're saying it even more and yeah. more and more, and we're going to keep saying it more and more and more. I, I may not devote entire shows to it, but you know, I'll be on the Tumblr, I'll be on the Tumblr, the Twitter, everywhere else, and just saying, hey, you know what, this needs to change. And yeah. and I'm putting it out here right now. If you catch me falling into it, please slap me and say, dude, what the fuck? Because I probably did it unintentionally, and I just need a reminder. Hey, asshole. Oh, okay. But I, but, but. Yeah, just like that scene in a uh, Liar Liar where uh, Jim Carrey holds the phone at arm's length and goes, stop breaking the law, asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, but before we, before we leave, there was one quick thing that I that I did want to bring up, and how some people are actually entwining this with race. Uh, it's yeah. it's a screen cap that I found of a of, of, of a Twitter conversation, and somebody has said white women being raped is like a white man experiencing racism. 
And at first it's like, oh, wait, wait, what? And the the first responder, I uh, don't know who this particular person is, uh, says, oh, what? Are you saying white women can't be raped or am I misunderstanding? Um, Considering, yeah, I, I agree with her, you know. And, and then this other asshole comes in and says, rape equals power plus non-consensual sex. Saying white women can be raped is saying whites can experience racism. I guess, you know, obviously spelling it out for her because apparently she was too stupid to understand, according to this guy. And when yeah, really cool. she's just like, wait, what? <laughs> well, and here, 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 here's my in, my entire refutation of that argument, saying like, oh, whites can't experience racism. Go and ask, go and talk to some white people who've been living on Hawaii for a time. Ask them what it's like to be constantly referred to as Howley. Howley? I... Yeah, that's the name. That's the yeah. name that, uh, Hawaiian natives have for white people who live there. Oh, okay. It's it's a pejorative term that basically means yeah, it's white. It, it's yeah, it's a <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, mean, it means like white, white. It means honky or, or whatever, you know. It's yeah, it's a pejorative yeah. term for white people living in Hawaii. So oh, okay. yeah, fuck off. Whites experience racism, not to the degree that obviously many other people do. They still do. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 of course she fires back with, "Yeah, I read it the first time, and you're wildly offen wildly and offensively wrong." I agree. And. Back. You can experience non-consensual sex, but you can't experience rape. You can't just see your privilege. You just can't see your privilege because you're a white woman. How the fuck? Where the fuck does he get off saying you can you can experience non-consensual sex, but you cannot experience rape? Does, right, does he like not understand? Men can't be raped because they're men. Right. It's like it's like hey, guess what? If the sex is non-consensual, that's fucking rape. Yeah. It was like, yeah. yeah, yeah it was as, like, well, what, as much what, what, as there what, is a, a power struggle with rape, and that that's why rape happens a lot of times, you know, it's not the end of the conversation. No. The end of the conversation is non-consensual. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You were being... You said no, somebody did it anyway, that's rape. Yes. And, and and rape in these in you know we are meaning in terms of sex because the the just no the wording the wording there is like that could, somebody could say wait 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 if if Timmy takes my, wants my cookie and he takes it anyway after I told him no is that rape no we're talking you know sexual that we when we in that we mean that in a sexual sense <laughs> I'm I'm just playing cover your I'm just well, playing it, ass covering here and again I think like <clears throat> something that I, I think is kind of taken the the focus off of the of the name of, of the word and you know made it less about sex and it's just like oh but you mean non-consensual or, or whatever is the fact that we use rape to describe practically everything if, you know that's that's negative these days like me and my friends were talking about it and how it's like weird it's like oh like oh do you guys uh do good at your baseball games like oh no man we totally got raped it's like wait 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 what yeah, yeah I mean... that was a pretty big like what, what what were you doing at that baseball game what happened yeah, I got, mean, like, got overcharged for something. Oh yeah, I totally got raped by the plumber. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, you that, didn't. Yeah, that's just. Uh, I, I I prefer to use the word fucked. You know, that that that's the definitely a different word, and of course, fuck is so versatile. So you know, yeah, a lot more versatile than rape. So yeah, so yeah. So there, there are very. I think there may have been one other instance, you know, at least within the past five years, that I would have for sure have used rape, and that was actually in the context of a video game, and where I was, I, I think it was Rygar I was playing, and just a whole bunch of enemies just ganged up on me, and and I equated it to being raped. And I look back on it now, and I'm like, yeah, but you know, yeah, because. Mm -hmm. They weren't doing anything sexual, obviously. I mean, it's a Nintendo game. They're not going to have that. But yeah. still, the wording, I look back now, I was like, yeah, the wording could have been a little better. Yeah. But anyway, so we, we have, I'm, I'm pretty sure we've gone over time <laughs> here. <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is a very, very important issue to be talking about and keep talking about it. I mean, next time we're going to have, you know, other things to talk about and, every, and all of that, but but just because we stop with this show doesn't mean we're gonna, you know, not ignore it, or or, 
Or does not mean we're going to ignore it? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We we're are going like... to take as passive a stance as possible. Yes. <laughs> but no, but no, just because we stop talking about it on this show doesn't mean that we stop talking about it elsewhere. So if you see, you'll probably see me pop it up on the social medias uh, and, and probably the two of you as well at, at certain points. So the conversation is not over. It's just we only have about an hour <laughs> for this show. <laughs> Which of course we've went over, but that's okay. You know this is an important thing. So um, so to end it off, yes, keep talking about this. Keep keep this discussion happening even while you go about your daily lives. You know you come home at the end of the day. You know if there's something that you want to say about it, say it. Um, you know porn, don't take it seriously. Prostitution is not because women are fuck objects for men. Guys, stop being fucking entitled to women. You're hurting the entire collective here. You really are. Uh, and if you're rejected from from having sex or whatever, if you if you try and have sex with a woman and she says no, the proper response is to just go off. Maybe you know, maybe sit in a corner for a little bit. You know, feel the pain. Sure, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna suck. But you know, you're gonna have to just get over it. Find somebody else who will fuck you. And if you can't find somebody in your area, well, Craigslist. <laughs> there, there are there are yeah. Craigslist and other sites out there. There, there are means for you to have sex if it's that important. And if you want to talk about power, fan, if you want to talk about things like, like, oh, we we have to put women in their place. Well, you know what their place is? Their place is right where they're standing right now. Their place is wherever the fuck they want to be. You know, woman wants to be a CEO and she's qualified enough. Then fuck yeah. You know, be the CEO. You know, woman mm-hmm. woman wants to be an officer and she's qualified to do so. Let her be an officer. You know, it doesn't matter if it's military, uh, police, whatever. Let her do it. You know, the the whole the whole point is equality, not men over women, not men not women over men. Equal, equal standing, all the way around. That that's the big message here. And and of course, guys, stop. Stop. Just just stop. You know, if you're not getting laid, that's not their fault. It's probably yours. And and if you're if women aren't throwing themselves at you and you're doing absolutely nothing to to want them to throw themselves at you, then uh, you need to stop being a lazy little prick and actually take take your sex life in your own hands. You know, just just saying. Oh, so with all of that, we are going to get out of here. Uh, if we wanted to find Holly on the social medias, where can we find her? You can find me all over the place as Gooky Gox, G-O-O-K-Y, G-O-X, uh, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram. Um, my Etsy store is gookygox.etsy.com, and you can find me on Facebook. My fan page is Holly Christine Brown, and I'm over at Nerdvice. Yay! And where can we find you, Gonzo? You can find me on Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube uh, at Gonzo Link. I'm also... Uh, I'm on the Gotham High audio drama, and I'm also part of Team Brotherhood's abridged series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Abridged. Sweet! And if you want to find me, you can find me on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. You can find me on the social medias under gomer21xx on the Twitters and the Tumblers. And if you want to help support the show and if you like what we do and you can toss money at us over at patreon.com slash gomer to one double x and money goes back into the site to get just different things like equipment upgrades material for future videos and for future podcasts if necessary that sort of thing and as a bonus if you want to have some really fabulous artwork done for you then go check out my girlfriend becky hopkins who has her own patreon page over at patreon.com slash becky hop and i believe those also have links to her deviantart account and her own website uh, over uh, at a uh, i think it's called hopkins creative which and she's probably going to hear this she, she's going to be like no it's this you asshole but we'll i guess i will find out <laughs> <laughs> But still, go toss money at her. Toss some money our way. We we could you know we could use some upgrades. Uh, I know my microphone could. <laughs> so until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Godzo Link signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.